Saskatchewan and the youth of the Green Resource Center from Los Angeles. that they need to hear from. 
So let's do a little bit of a shout out in terms of all the different places where we're from. I want to actually start first, of course, being from the West Coast. I want to start with the West Coast. So I want to see all the folks from California. And all the people from Washington. I see you. So they're all smart. 
but they have we have one thing in common in our for our song, heart. And um, I saw his t-shirts, Casa, Casa de Brown. Yeah, yeah, estamos en tu casa, no? Such a pander. Well, welcome, and thank you very much for having me. I, I, I know I took up two minutes of my five minutes. Uh, to answer very directly uh, the question of what I'm doing, what members of our caucus is doing in terms of immigration reform is that we stand very solidly uh, behind the idea of uh, immigration reform, and we want to make sure that family reunification occurs, and family reunification is about citizens and legal permanent residents applying to be reunited with their children and with their spouses <coughs> you know, to bring them over. Sounds like a simple thing. As a citizen and as a legal permanent resident, it isn't. It takes decades to do that. Sometimes people lose the papers and you gotta start all over again. And so that when you want your children over, by the time they're ready to come over, so much time has passed to become adults. Then they got to go back and do it all over again. It's not fair, it's not American. And if the immigration system was a, was a, a store like Nordstrom's or Macy's, the immigration system would be a terrible customer service outfit. Yes. They would flunk, they would be bankrupt. And so we have to make sure that as citizens and as legal permanent residents, as taxpayers, that we get the bang for our bucks. Now there's one other thing that we've added in the Reuniting uh, Families Act, and that is to recognize permanent partners. Permanent partners who have partners overseas who are recognized as um, couples who are dedicated and have committed themselves to each other according to the laws from the countries they come from or the state they come from. And so we want to make sure that all families, no exceptions, all families should be able to be um, part of the um, Reuniting the Families Act. Each one, of our, each one of our members of our caucus is dedicated to that. Now, what can you do? Um, we have a president that was voted in because we wanted change. And he spoke with eloquence, and he spoke to our hearts, he spoke to our conditions, and he gave us hope. But you have to remember that in this country, the presidency is the executive branch, and they're just one part of the government. The other part is the Senate and the House of Representatives. We make the laws. President Obama proposes, we dispose, and the judiciary, they judge whether the laws are constitutional or not. But who puts them all there? You do. So really, we have to remember that although the president is the most powerful person in the world, and Congress is the most influential, but you are the most powerful. We have to remember where power comes from. It's like electricity, you just switch on and off, lights go on, that's automatic, you don't, you don't think about it. We go outside and we enjoy the laws of this land. We don't think about how it came about. So we have to remember that the power came from the people. In the 60s, we used to say power to the people. Um, so if we look at our situation right now and the battles that we're going through in the House of Representatives and the Senate, we have an energy crisis. We have energy crisis. We have to be infused by the power of yourselves, and the power of your presence, and the power of your voices, and the power of your experiences. So we need to understand that in order to be able to move this, people will have to be able to be active by yourselves. You have to go into these offices and put your idea of service about help. You have to put your face on your issue and your issue in your face in front of their face and their staff's face. And tell them your story. So that their vote counts for you. Okay. 
that you will be counting the boats as long as well as we will be. But if you're not happy, they have to vote, they have to count the votes when they go up for re-election. All of us do. Now whether you're a legal permanent resident, you can't vote, you can influence. And if you're a citizen, you can vote. How many of you are citizens right now? You see? I'd have to pay attention. How many of you are citizens waiting? Legal permanent residents. I won't ask the next question. But I will tell you that I'm a citizen by birth. I didn't choose. Those of you who became citizens through the naturalization process, you chose to be a citizen. So make that choice work for you. Okay? And so make sure that they know that you can count afterwards in November and June. It's not a threat, it's not a threat, you know, it's not a threat, it's a promise. <laughs> and it's your right, and it is your responsibility. So the power comes from where? Yourselves. But it only affected when you're organized, like they're doing right now. So we want to make sure that the immigration reform is comprehensive, that it gives us dignity, that recognizes us immigrants with dignity. Like I said before, um, this term illegal immigrants, I'm gonna say it again, you are not illegal human beings. You may not have documents, or we have you know, people without documents, so they're um, single women. We're all in numbers. Now you have, you, have, you have friends in the White House, you have friends in the Senate, you have friends in the House of Representatives. Leverage, allow them to leverage your friendship with them, with the other folks. I wouldn't spend a lot of time with people who you know are going to vote the right way, or understand them. Go to those who need a little bit more education, a little bit more exposure, and a little bit more nurturing to we love them. You don't have to love the politics. We want you to love them so that they know that when they don't do the right thing, they're doing the wrong thing to somebody that they shouldn't be afraid of. I look at you, I don't think there's any scary about you. I don't know what people are afraid of. We need to let them know that we're awake, we're active, and we're going to move on this issue. So that the promise that Barack Obama as president, as candidate, can, can make sure that this promise will be successful. But he can only be successful by the power that you influence. And also I'm not, I might be so, Our Senate leaders, our House leaders, they're not your enemy. So much by you. Yeah, but Thank you again, Congressman Honda. Our next speaker is Congressman Mike Quigley from the state of Illinois. Mike Quigley, Congressman Honda. Uh, please, please join us on stage. Give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Quigley, and I'm for Comprehensive Immigration Reform. I hate suspense. Who else is here from Chicago? Okay. Go Cubs, go Packers, I get it. I'm not going to pander too much today. Listen, let me tell you why I'm for Comprehensive Immigration Reform. 
because uh, I have a different view of what this country is about than those who oppose it. Or I believe that my country uh, measures you by the content of your character, not the color of your skin, the country of your origin, origin, your age, your faith, your orientation, your gender. It is who you are that matters in this country. And that's the country I represent. When I was sworn in in April, that was the country I swore to support. And it was those beliefs and those notions that we should fight for every single day, and you're a large part of it. It was mentioned that unity is key. Let me tell you what's key in this country. It's diversity. It's what made this country strong from its first day. Now, it took us a while to figure that out, folks. Think about it. From the earliest days, what our Constitution represented and what our founding fathers talked about, what we finally moved toward, toward equity, toward equality, toward fairness, it takes us a while to get to everybody. It's a glacial pace at times, but we get there, and we're going to get there to be fair to everyone, and everyone in this room, and everyone in this country. That's the right thing to do. From our founding fathers at a time when you had to be a white male property owner to vote, the time of Lincoln at Gettysburg, when he said, 87 years ago, did we meet it when all men are created equal? to a time now when we say that about everyone in our world and in our country. So I have faith in my country. My country is about unity, my country is about faith, my country is about diversity. It is not about splitting families about it. My country is not about the following. It is not about fear mongering. It is not about scapegoats. It is not about pitting one group against another. It is not about taking the opportunity of an economic downturn to make somebody the bad guy, to make some other group the bad guys. Every day you turn on the TV, you're going to hear that. You're going to see those commercials. You're going to see it in political advertising. If it doesn't turn your stomach, it should. This is the antithesis of what this country is built upon. It is what we're going to have to challenge. Now, I know you already talked about the health care thing. You ought to learn from those discussions. We ought to be prepared when we come to debating immigration reform to be prepared for what you've already seen in the health care debate. Right? It's somebody else's fault. Right? You're going to be the victim. Something's going to hurt you. Fear mongering is the cheapest tactic. It is the most common. But you have to be out there in front of it. And here's how you do it. You are the truth. You represent among the best of this country. You are what we should all support. So you represent what we need to get out there. Law-abiding, hard-working humans of quality character who care about this country, who could do nothing but make this country stronger. We can't allow that to happen. We have to learn the lessons of the healthcare debate and be out there way ahead of time representing what this country is really about. So I'm very proud to support my colleague's measure already that deals with unifying families. I'm very proud to support the DREAM Act, and I'm glad to talk with my friend. I'm glad to talk to my friends and colleagues who I'm learning from. I hope they can learn a little bit from me about why they should support uh, comprehensive immigration. Uh, I can I am uh, the seat right next to Congressman Gutierrez in Illinois, and we talk on an everyday basis uh, how, about how to move comprehensive immigration reform. So it is with that in mind that I'm proud to be here today to let you know I'm ready to go. Let's get this done. Let's be proud of it.
we're a new class. Hey, I'm 431, and I say, watch out, 430. So, our question to Representative Quigley is, do you commit to get more freshmen of that class of 431 on board immigration reform? To the extent I can, I commit to help get freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors on board. immigration reform. So the next part of our agenda and this dialogue is to actually have a panel presentation. And what we want to do is bring those uh, to bring forward those individuals who are intimately and I mean these are the people who are going to be staying up late late in the night to try to move forward immigration reform. And we want to hear from them what is the latest on um, uh, movement and work on immigration reform. So I actually want to um, bring forward our panel, a very distinguished um, guest. Our first, um, and actually to bring our panel forward, and I'll go and introduce them. We have some questions as well for you. Um, our first panelist is Joe Onan, who is the senior counsel to the Speaker of the House. He has entered, he entered government service as the law clerk for uh, Chief Judge David uh, Bazelon of the District of Columbia Circuit. And I just want to say, this person has uh, worked with almost every single president on this issue. He has worked with uh, Senator Ted Kennedy, and I think we definitely um, take this time and, and take this moment to also honor um, Senator Kennedy for everything that he did. Most importantly, I think his role with the Speaker of the House and really moving forward um, this, this work. Um, we also have Carrie Talbot with us, um, who is a dear friend. And Carrie Sherlock Talbot is the Chief Counsel to Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey. And I heard there were some folks from New Jersey. And previously, we knew her because she was working as um, a lawyer with the American Immigration Lawyers Association and the Rights Working Group. We also have with us Angela Maria Arbolera. And Angela Arbolera is senior advisor for Hispanic and Asian Affairs for our, the Senator Majority Leader Harry Reid from Nevada. They have some, also some prepared comments, but um, the first question for Jonik is, what is the state of play? Uh, what can we expect in terms of timing, content, challenges, and most importantly, what are the opportunities to move forward immigration reform? Well, thank you, uh, and I'm delighted uh, to be here. Uh, I note that right before this session, you had a session on healthcare, and in a way, that order of things is, is appropriate politically because, I want to be realistic, health care reform and the passage of health care reform is absolutely crucial to our future success in passing comprehensive immigration reform. Realistically, if we fail, if we fail to pass Healthcare reform legislation, it's going to be very, very difficult to pass comprehensive immigration reform or anything else. Many of you, of course, have heard the statements by certain political leaders, I'll make this nonpartisan by not mentioning their party, who have said that they want to defeat health care reform in part to defeat President Obama, to make it his Waterloo. That means Waterloo and disaster for all the initiatives, which include whether it's climate change, financial deregulation, and yes, immigration reform. So the real prerequisite, we have to succeed on this, and then we have to move on. With health care reform passing, I think anything is possible. Without it, nothing may be possible. So yeah, keep that in mind as you decide how to devote your energies in the next few weeks and the next 
uh, several weeks when we have to get this bill uh, passed. Now, as you know, the speaker is deeply committed to comprehensive immigration reform. She is deeply concerned about some of the things that are now going on as we await uh, comprehensive reform. Uh, as many of you know, she was at a rally in, in San Francisco where she said that the current policies of separating American families is un-American. And you know, she took some uh, attacks from, from the right on that, but that is what she believes and has always stood for. Uh, we in the House have done a lot of work on immigration reform. The chair of the subcommittee, uh, aided by people like Mr. Honda and Mr. Gutierrez who are here, of Zoloft held over 20 hearings. And at those hearings, I think they disproved all the myths, all the negatives, they built a very good record. We're now looking over to the Senate side where Senator Schumer is gonna be a very, very able leader of the Immigration Committee there, uh, replacing uh, Senator Kennedy. Uh, and uh, we do expect uh, tremendous uh, leadership from him. Uh, my guess is that the Senate uh, will be asked to go first. Uh, I think that under the leadership of Senator Schumer, the leadership of uh, Majority Leader Reid will succeed in the Senate and then in the House. Uh, beginning uh, the process in January, hopefully by then, by Thanksgiving at least, we will pass the health reform bill, which will be the predicate for new initiatives on immigration reform. Thank you. Our next committee is to sit uh, at the panel at um, Carrie, um, the question is, what can we expect in the details uh, in terms of the CIR? Oh. Thank you so much, everyone, for having us. My boss, Senator Menendez of New Jersey, believes the time for immigration reform is now. So <laughs> It's not just the right thing to do for our communities, it's the right thing to do for America. We, our communities are suffering. You all know that. You live in communities every day where families have been ripped apart by raids. People have been detained mistakenly, sometimes or on purpose, as ICE agents bust into their homes and arrest them. We've had people deported accidentally, immigrants dying in detention. We have a family system that hasn't been updated in 20 years, where people are waiting decades. My boss says almost every day to me, this is the civil rights issue of our time. If we fail to show leadership on this, we stand idly by, the communities will not stand with us at the polls, and how could we expect them to? The political truth is that our communities are helping Democrats win. And to continue to do that, to continue to have our community supporting Democrats, we need to enact comprehensive reform. It's not only a political issue, it's not only a civil rights issue, it's an economic issue. Voters overwhelmingly say that we, that immigrants support our communities, we want them paying taxes, we want them contributing to the economy, we want them buying their own health insurance. We, uh, my boss has introduced several pieces of legislation that he feels very strongly about. One with uh, Congressman Mike Honda in the House. It's the Reuniting Families Act, S. 1085, H.R. 2709. In the Senate, he introduced it with Senator Schumer, uh, Jill Brand, and the late Senator Kennedy. And this would modernize our system, our family system, and let people actually reunite with their families in a timely way. That's a key element of reform. Of course, the central piece of reform is making sure that people can earn a path to citizenship. Those are the two central pieces. He also believes that our enforcement system, while it should be strengthened, it also should be fair. He's introduced two bills. S-1549, a bill that uh, protects the citizens and residents from unlawful detentions, and S-1550, the Strong Standards Act, um, which would make sure that people are treated humanely in detention. So I, I look forward to working with you. Senator Menendez works, looks forward to working with you. We want to hear your voices in Washington. We are so glad to see you here today. 
I think the three things we need to do to work together to make this happen is continue to work with new allies in your communities, as I know you're doing already. Continue working the phones and meeting with your legislators like you're doing today. Just don't give up, because we're going to make it happen. Uh, where is the Senate and what is Reed's position? Good morning. Um, thank you so much to NACASAC for inviting us to this conference. I'm really heartened to see a room of APIs and Latinos sitting together working on issues of concern to all of us, immigration, healthcare, and other issues that really impact our communities. Um, Specifically on the issue of immigration, let me just echo some of the issues that Joe and Terry talked about. It is absolutely correct that first things first, we must do um, health care reform right now. Uh, and in order to get that um, path clear, we need to make sure that it passes quickly and that it passes with not so many restrictions and that it passes with things that can actually empower and help the immigrant community. After um, healthcare, my boss, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, has said time and time again that immigration is his number, his, his priority. And he said it from the beginning of the 111th Congress. Most recently, he said that there is three issues that he wants to make sure ha that happen mm -hmm. in this Congress and hopefully before the year is up. Number one is healthcare. Number two is climate change. Number three is immigration reform. You all have seen what has happened. We've been working really hard and healthcare reform has taken longer than we have expected. And the day keeps on being delayed and postponed. And that contributes to immigration being delayed and postponed. So the key here is to make sure that we get out a good healthcare bill first and then we go to climate change, hopefully that won't take that long, and then immigration. So you may think, oh my gosh, we have two big bills before immigration reform, are we gonna do anything right now? The answer is yes. The Senate has been working on an immigration bill for, since, uh, since uh, Senator Schumer took the gavel in the subcommittee of immigration. And he's been working and crafting a bill, he's already held numerous hearings on different issues, different pieces, of immigration so that the bill writing and the policy making can be informed by those hearings. We also are working hand in hand with our friends in the House and they have their own process and the hope is that the Senate moves on this side and then the House moves on this side and then they meet hopefully um, towards the end of the year with a product and then hopefully by the beginning of 2010 with uh, some action on both House and Senate floors. Now, my boss, the majority leader, understands that we don't have time to wait, that we've been waiting for a long time, and that our communities are hurting. And so he wants to do this as soon as possible. He understands that we cannot wait until 2011. And we also, also understand that we have a lot of political and policy um, agenda items for 2010. So we want to do it the sooner the better. Let me just repeat that. We want to do it the sooner the better. So what can you So what can what can you do um, what can you do right now? First we need to remember where we were in 2006. Remember all those amazing marches and rallies where there were hundreds of thousands of people, Latinos, Asians, African immigrants, all kinds of people. Um, taken to the streets in 2006. That year was a very powerful year. That year we were up against a very anti-immigrant bill. Remember the censor runner bill? The, it was enforcement only. Well, that year the Senate was able to pass an immigration bill. We passed the bill, let's not forget that. And we had a lot of votes for that bill, 62 to 36. Unfortunately, it didn't go anywhere after it passed the Senate, but we were able to pass it. 2007, we took a, we took a step back, and we lost a lot of uh, a lot of Republicans, and we lost a lot of Democrats. And the reason I believe why we lost Republicans and Democrats that year was because the other side of the debate 
the right wing was very well organized. And we were not as well organized. And the offices in Capitol Hill were flooded with letters and phone calls. It was a thousand to one almost. And Congress people and congressmen and senators realized that you know it wasn't so clear cut. So my message to you is now in 2009 when we're ready, when we're doing the work, when we're doing um, these kinds of meetings, we need to make sure that we cranked up the heat and we let know our congressmen and our senators that you all care and that you all are paying attention. And that takes a form of letters, calls, emails, uh, coming to the Hill and putting these kinds of events together. But they must see you and they must hear you and they must feel that the, uh, that the urgency is, is now. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. the immigration reform bill. And there's a lot of people in this room who have seen the hurt um, in families, um, who see people, who have talked to people, who have family members that, are, um, that have been deported. A lot of young people in this room who are dreaming of giving so much to this country. And especially, I know that we have a lot of folks, and I say about California with um, Congress um, a member and Speaker Pelosi. So important from California. All the Californians were here. This is a real strong message. This is an issue that needs a green light. This is not an issue, and, and like we hear from, we hear you. But we want to all, and we're here today because we want you to understand there is a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, and a lot of things that are going wrong. And that each day that we wait on immigration reform is a day that there is one more tragedy, one more young, uh, a young person who can't move forward. And, and I know that we are here, we're all fighting for health care reform, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to make it happen. And we care about our world and we care about the climate. We're going we're gonna to fight for that. But let me tell you, we are here because immigration reform can't wait. Is that right? Yeah. I want you to hear that loud and clear, and we're going to keep fighting, and we're going to be calling. We are calling. We're faxing. We are doing everything that we need to do to make sure that this is a reality. So thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, thank you to Carrie, Joe, and Angela for joining us. Our immigration system is broken, and we know that the best way to understand the challenges we face and the solutions that we need is to now hear from our own community. So I'd like to invite five of our community members here to the stage, and I'm going to introduce them all, and they'll be speaking for two minutes each and sharing their stories on both citizenship and on issues around immigration and how that affects them. Uh, first, we'll have two Thomas Hong from New Orleans, Louisiana, Min Song Fak from Chicago, Illinois, Ismail Ahmed from Maine, Rodolfo Soriano from Seattle, Washington, and then Dora Chalarco from New York City. Okay, we'll see you today. See you on immigration system needs to be reformed. Last year, the U.S. signed a re repatriation agreement with Vietnam, allowing for deportation of thousands of Vietnamese Americans. As a result, thousands of Vietnamese Americans with orders of removal faced deportation back to the very country they fled as refugees. Many affected are family members and communities who are, at an instant, separated from their loved ones indefinitely. Many, many are not afforded due process and fair treatment in immigration proceedings. Our current system is unjust. Especially after Hurricane Katrina, I saw these injustices firsthand when I was an intern investigator for the Orleans Public Defender criminal court system. <laughs> we need immigration reform that ensures all individuals receive their fair day in court through strong due process provisions that will restore immigration judges' ability to consider the circumstances of each individual's case. Yep, yep. Thank you.
Good morning, comrades. My name is Ismail Ahmed. Uh, I come from Somalia. I was admitted to the United States in 1999 as a Somali refugee. Uh, citizenship means a lot to me. It means a new life, it means a new country, and it means being with all of you here. As an American, I don't think I'm going back on that. I want to share my reasons why family reunification is very important and I would like you to be part of the uh, comprehensive immigration reform. When I left Somalia in 1991, I was separated from my family. We were a family of seven. We were separated for about seven years. I lived in a refugee camp for eight years without my family members. Then we got reunited. <coughs> Then we got resettled, and we were all resettled in pieces. Ten years into living in the United States, ten years after my kids have graduated from high school, I still don't have some members of my family with me. I have restless nights. I don't enjoy my freedom because my family members are not with me. I can't progress. I can't move because the application process is very long. If I change my address, if I change my life, if I want to move to Hawaii, that is just impossible for me. So I cannot live my life. I am grounded in Maine with all those winters for the last 10 years, <laughs> waiting for my family to come in. So with me, it's very important to understand that my family also in refugee live very different life. There are about 3.8 million Somalis in need of humanitarian aid. There are about 300,000 Somalis living in refugee camps in various parts of the world. So with me, we need uh, comprehensive immigration reform and it includes family reunification and this should be our year. Good morning. I'm from Chicago. So please fighting and shouting up with humanity. The citizenship is important to me because it gives me the right to live freely and freely without fear. I volunteer at community organization, attend church, go to school full time, and currently searching for part-time job for, to pay for my tuition. I have a dream and I do my best to achieve that dream just like you. I'm one of 65,000 high school students who graduate every year without fail. Recently, my Google logo design was chosen to enter an online, online competition, but because I didn't have a social security number, I couldn't enter my design. Despite, this off, despite these efforts, my status become an ultimate roadblock to my dream. The only difference is that I always remind of the reality that I don't even have opportunity to achieve my dream. I wish I had the opportunity to succeed to contrib contribute to this country. Thank you. Hello. Good morning. Teaching is very important for me because since I had a season, I could exercise the right to vote and had a voice in this political system. My name is Rudy Preño, and I'm from the organization named America One. I'm going to share my reasons why competitive immigration reform is very important for me and our communities. As an independent worker, is, I am very frustrated to work hard have learned English and cannot keep a, a job. A question for you is, is working a criminal activity as in other criminal activities? I represent millions of workers. When I moved from my country, I did it because they pay a miserable salary. Even those companies in my country are American companies. I have suffered abuse on the job because my immigration status here in America. 
they had me working on their battery contention, even after I had an accident on the job, getting my physical condition even worse. I, I would have a legal, if I have a good, uh, had a good uh, legal status, my situation could be very different. One is companies have not been able to abuse me and had a better job with more financial uh, stability. And I had to work two or three jobs and spend some quality time with my family and probably use some of that time to go to school. I care about this country. This is why we need Congress to pass comprehensive immigration reform. We want when dignity. You say, could you start off with this one? Power to the people. After the second. No human being is legal. Make it, make it real. All men are equal. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I am Donna Chalaka, a proud member of the Maker of New York. I'm here because citizenship means to me a chief a dream that I have wanted for a long time. I want to share my reasons why it is important for me and for my community to create a pathway to citizenship for millions of people in this great nation. We want this to happen now, not next year, not after midterm election, but now. I came to the U.S. nine years ago because of problems back in Colombia where security was becoming an issue and the opportunities to provide for my family were limited. Since I came, I wanted to put in use the skill I learned in a, as a business administrator. I began to study English and attending college where I took bookkeeping and business classes. My son, who was 17 at that time, also started taking English classes and eventually was accepted to City College to study mechanical engineering. There have been many opportunities that we lost because of our immigration status. I'm proud to say that this December, my son will graduate as a mechanical engineer. But, Like many others who are talented and dedicated to our community, we won't be able to use those skills in the U.S. because he does not have the right docu documentation. As a business consultant, I have helped hundreds of immigrants in New York pay their taxes and start their own business. As a result of it, they have hired many local workers. I have set up tax workshop and provided guidance to hundreds of immigrants who want to do the right thing and give back the fair share. All families should be able to safeguard their health, education, and progress. Immigrants are American families, workers and labor seeking to build the American dream. I'm just one story of million in New York. They are, they, I'm sorry, that are contributing every day to this nation. It is why I'm here today to tell the members of the Congress that we cannot wait any longer to pass comprehensive immigration reform. The time is right. The time is now. Si se puede. representatives are friends, um, colleagues from um, Illinois. And we have, um, we're very, I think we're very fortunate as part of the immigrant rights movement 
Um, and we say this, we celebrate Illinois just the way we celebrate all the rest of the different states. Um, but we celebrate it because we have an incredible um, leader who is moving forward our agenda from Illinois. Um, to talk a little bit more about um, and introduce them and, and, and talk about some of the wonderful organizing that's happening in Illinois, we have Juan Soto from the Gamaliel Foundation and Becky Balcor, who is with the Korean American Resource um, Center, a Cultural Center in Illinois, and also a board member of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. On behalf of the Chicago residents that have come overnight from Chicago, of NACASAC and the Korean American Resource and Cultural Center in Chicago, the Korean Resource Center in Los Angeles, and the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, we want to really deeply thank you for your tremendous leadership on immigration reform and in this movement. We recognize you for your work as chair of the Immigration Task Force for the Democratic Caucus, your membership on the Judiciary Committee, and in the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. We also deeply appreciate your leadership at the grassroots level, and I've had the privilege of attending many of the meetings you constantly have with community members, leaders, and faith leaders in the Chicago area. On your recent tour around the country, I'm sure you've heard stories that are similar to the ones that we have heard today, and unfortunately that we continue to hear every day. These are the stories of the people who inspire all of us, including you, to do our work. It has been almost one year under the new administration, and while there have been many promises, there has been little action, and we can't wait anymore. We are asking that these promises be fulfilled and that something is done now. So Congressman Gutierrez, a champion of all immigrants. I also have the pleasure of working with you on the Familias Unidas tour, and I'm grateful of traveling with you to various cities, from Atlanta to Detroit to Milwaukee to Minnesota, and our own home state, and also city in Chicago. Um, so, uh, in our style of getting commitments, here is the question. So, Congressman Gutierrez, as you know, the White House and the congressional leadership, uh, Pelosi, Congresswoman Pelosi and Senator Reid, have said that this is a priority for our communities. But, as, uh, but we also want them to know how urgent this is all for us right now. Will you play a direct leadership role along with the CHC and KPAC and making sure that our progressive immigra a progressive immigration reform bill is introduced this year. Yes or no? Si se puede. 